Do you struggle setting goals? Because I have spent the last several years figuring it out and I'm finally sharing all of it with you today. So I'm really excited to get started on this video. My name is Jenna Redfield and I help people with Notion, specifically those who have ADHD or are in the content creation space. And today I'm going to be walking through a really, really important topic, which is goal setting. I have always struggled with goals. It's something that since I was very young, I was kind of unsure of what I wanted to do. And honestly, the way that they teach goals in school isn't super helpful because it's more for a neurotypical brain and my brain works a little differently. So today I'm going to be walking through just a bunch of things about goals, specifically the things that I've learned in books that I've read, how I've actually applied it to my life, and then I'll be walking through how I actually do this in Notion. So make sure to stay to the end to watch that part. Today I'm going to be talking specifically about what goals are, why you should write them down, and just some of the differences between different types of goals and the four-step process to actually uh, get your goals accomplished. So let's just get started. Make sure to subscribe for more videos and check out my life tracker template that is going to be included in this video below. So one of the things that I've always struggled with is writing goals down. I think that's something that I personally have always struggled with. So I just read this book called Your Best Year Ever by Michael Hyatt. He's actually a Notion user and I've seen him in the Notion Made Simple Facebook group, so I thought that was really cool. But he has this five reasons why it's important to have written goals. Number one, it forces you to clarify what you want. Uh, if you don't know what you want, it's very hard to accomplish anything in life. Number two, writing down goals helps overcome resistance. By writing it down, obviously you are going to make sure that it actually happens if you want it. Um, number three, it motivates you to take action because you have it, again, written down. Number four, it filters other opportunities. If something else comes up and it's not part of your goals, it's easier to say no. And then five, it enables you to see and celebrate your progress. I think that's a really important thing that a lot of people don't do is they don't celebrate when they've achieved things. And we'll talk about that a little bit um, as we go. But one of the things I wanted to talk about was the different types of goals. So I consider goals into two different categories. There's the goals that are actionable that you wanna achieve within the next year. And then there's something called dreams. Dreams, visions, uh, also known as your bucket list, those are things that you eventually wanna do someday, but are not pressing. Um, I have them all in one list and I filtered it into two. I have someday list and my, like I wanna do within the next year list. For, especially for us ADHDers, we don't want to look more than maybe a year ahead, and that might even be too far. Uh, that's why I recommend doing everything in quarters. So um, I recently read the book 12 Week Year, which is a great book, especially for ADHD years. I've seen a ton of people making YouTube videos about this book. It was very helpful. It's basically instead of planning out for a year, plan out 12 weeks and pretend that that's a year so that you actually celebrate it when you get the thing done that you want to do. We'll talk about that in a second. but. One of the things that you have to make sure that you're focused on is what are the actual things that you want to accomplish right now? What are the things that you want to do right now and that you can do right now? So having a list of your goals is really important. So there's four, to me, there's four steps in this goal process and I'll go through each one. So number one is called objectives or value goals. Um, I've seen multiple people talk about this. If you've heard of the term OKR, which is objectives and key results, that is a very common goal setting thing. Also, I believe August Bradley talked about value goals. I kind of put those at the top level of umbrellas. These are things like, I want to be healthy. I want to find love. I want to be successful. These are just the general overarching categories and it's what everything falls into. Similar to the pillar system, um, I consider the objectives very, very, very highbrow, like very like overarching umbrella things. And I would say don't do more than 10. And a lot of them are gonna be very much like, this is just something I want in my life. I wanna be successful. Like that's, that's a pretty broad spectrum, but that's the first step is figure out what are the main things you want in life. Um, and that's your objective overall. Then the second one is going to be key results or what I call them outcome goals. So these are the things that actually are going to happen. These are the goals that are actually going to be accomplished, right? So you can have as many as you want under each objective, but for me, it's things like, I wanna lose 30 pounds. I want to, so it's like, it's like an actual goal that is measurable, right? It's an outcome. I wanna launch my course. I want to write a book. These are the outcomes that you're getting, right? The results. These are the things that are that actually will exist once you achieve your goal. So I like to call them outcome goals because to me in my brain, I'm like, that's what I'm trying to achieve is an outcome. 
I, I don't like results. I just don't like that word. I like outcome because it's just it just works better for me. So within that, um, there are different types of, of ways to measure a goal, right? So you've probably heard of the SMART goal concept, which um, I feel like is taught to us as children. There's also another one called the PACT goals, which actually my friend uh, wrote a book and she uh, it's called One Decision Away by Paula Doroff and she wrote this book and she mentioned PACT goals and I was like, what is PACT goal? So I looked it up. Basically it's purposeful, actionable, continuous, and trackable. So that is another type of way to set a goal. But the one that I really like is actually, again, Michael Hyatt. He has one called Smarter Goals. Um, and so what that stands for is specific, measurable, actionable, risky, time keyed, exciting, and relevant. Um, you should definitely read the book, uh, your best year ever because I think it really walks through each of those. Some of the things that are interesting is like risky. Like us ADHDers, we have to have some element of risk in our goals in order for us to do it. One of the things that they said, which I think was really interesting, was we are driven more strongly to avoid losses than to achieve gains. The aversion to failure of not reaching the goal is much stronger than the desire to achieve it. I was like, yes, that is exactly what I need for my dopamine, right? I need to have some level of risk in my goals. If I don't achieve it, what happens, right? I'm much, much, much more motivated by uh, like things that are negative than by positive results. So adding risk into your goals is super valuable, especially if you have ADHD or something where you struggle achieving goals. Basically. So we've got step one, objectives, step two, outcome goals, and that's the actual goal that you want to achieve. The next one, this is an important one, and I've only recently learned about this, and I think it made so much sense when I heard it. The third is process goals. So these are the goals in between your to-do list and the outcome goals. These are the things like, for example, if you want to lose 30 pounds, for each outcome goal, you want three process goals. Okay, so let's just say the outcome goal is to lose 30 pounds. The three process goals are work out every day, um, you know, plan your meals every day, and uh, walk every day. Those are also goals. They're not the outcome though, right? Your goal isn't to walk more. The goal is to lose weight. So the process goal is the goal in between to get to the outcome. So. My goal right now is to walk every day, to go to the gym, and to eat well. So those are technically goals, right? But they're not what the outcome is. My goal isn't to eat healthy, the goal is to be healthy. So I think that was the missing key for me as I was like, oh, I have these goals, these outcome goals, but I didn't have anything in between. I'm like, well, I have to be healthy. How does that work? So for me, having those three you know, goals for each outcome goal is so helpful. And I was like, oh my gosh, this makes so much sense to me because I was like, I just can't get from the leap from a to-do list to a goal. Like it just didn't make sense. So having that in between was super helpful. So I think what you should do, and we'll talk about this as we go through Notion, is have a list of your outcome goals. And for each outcome goal, list three goals that you can be doing consistently that are basically the lead and leg measures of getting to that goal. If you don't know what lead and leg measures are, they basically are more in like industrial industries where it's like you can see by doing this thing if it's leading to the right result or if it's not working, it's not it's getting away from it. Um, this is in the book, The Four Disciplines of Execution, which is also a great book, the 4DX model. Um, there's a lot of stuff in there that I really enjoyed, but it's very much for like a large business. But I personally applied a lot of it to myself. So this is so basically you've got so you've got one objectives, two your uh, outcome goals, and then three your process goals. The final one is your actual to-do list or action items. That's the things that you're doing every single day to achieve, again, that final goal. But now what the daily action items are doing is working towards your process goals. So it's not working towards your final goal, it's working to finish those process goals, which in the end will result in the outcome goals, right? So if you go and work out at the gym every day, which is your process goal, if you eat healthier, those are just the daily things that you need to be doing, and those are the action items, Is drive to the gym, <laughs> buy gym shoes, those sort of things, those are your to-do lists. 
the actual outcome happens as a result of the process goals, right? So for me, when I lost 30 pounds last year, that was one of the things I did was I weighed myself every day. That was a process goal. I, I, I woke up and I weighed myself. That was a process goal. I walked for 45 minutes every day. That was a process goal. And by doing all of these things, I, I worked out on my TV with, the, with weights every day or, when, or a couple times a week. Honestly, the outcome happened as a result. And I was like, oh, because like when I before I didn't really put that all together in my head. So having these smaller goals, which are the ones that you do every day, will lead to the outcome that you want. If you're putting yourself out there on social media, the outcome is that you will gain followers, right? So and by gaining followers, you'll gain sales. So it's like you have to think of it like linearly. And so when it comes back down into the day, um, there's a great book called Redeeming Your Time. Um, I highly recommend it. He has another version of this, which is basically where he's got um, similar. It's mission, callings, long-term goals, quarterly goals, projects and actions, and then posterities, which posterities uh, or posteriority, sorry, are basically the things that you want to avoid to achieve your goals, um, which I thought was interesting. But you know, so it's a similar thing. It's like that stairs, it's the step process. And one thing I want to mention with these four steps is I have assigned a icon to each of them. I'm a very visual person. And so having an icon for the ob ob um, objectives, I have a trophy icon. So that's like the, the, the main goal, the objective, the trophy for the uh, outcome goals. I have a target or bullseye. I thought that was very helpful because that's what I'm really trying to aim for, for the Process goals, I have stairs. Stairs are a great metaphor for getting to the next level. So those are the actual steps I'm taking to get to the goal. And then the to-do list, I just do a check because that's like action items. I'm checking off something on my list to get to the process goal achieved. So let's talk a little bit about the action items or to-do list. Now I am probably gonna do a follow-up video on this because I think it's important to talk about action items and to-do lists. And I have talked about it before. I, my, my opinions have changed over the, the past year. But one of the things that Jordan talks about in his book, Redeeming Your Time, is we constantly have all these brain like open loops going on in our head and we need to get them out. So writing things down that we have to do, even if we think it, <laughs> we could do it really quickly, I still think it's important to write everything down and then assign it right to a process goal. So if, for example, if I want to travel more, that's my objective. Let's just say I'm going on a trip to Mexico and my process goal is to, uh, you know, get ready for that. My action item is to renew my passport because I need to do that. I don't have a passport currently. So like those are, my, that would be, that is literally on my action items list right now is to renew my passport. So that is a to-do item that I know I need to do. I know some people use like projects as well. I think projects and process goals are kind of similar. They're in the same kind of category as like, what's this larger like project that you're doing to achieve that final goal? So having those open loops out of your head and written down as an action item list Having that inbox like in um, getting things done, which I know is another uh, process, which again, we can talk about in maybe a to-do list video, but there is so much to, you know, all of this, there's all these different things. There's um, the commitment tracking system, the daily me's, PPV, para, GTD, Eisenhower matrix, deep work. Then there's things like wildly important goals, uh, big, <laughs> Bay hairy, audacious goals. Like there's all of these keywords and things that I've read in all of these books, but really it comes down to what makes sense to your brain and how does Notion also help with this? Because one of the things I love about Notion and they've recently added recurring options, which I'm really excited about. But one of the things I like is that it relates to different databases that have these different goals. And so within my life tracker template, I actually have all of these set up for you. So if you want to check that out below, you can uh, learn more about that template. It's a quite large, very intense template. So it has a lot of information in there. Um, but I wanted to walk through specifically how I set up these four steps in Notion so that you can actually achieve your goals. So let's move over to Notion and walk through that. Okay. So when you get into here, you're going to click into business projects and then you're going to click on goal setting. So that's how you get to this area. So you can see here that I have the four different options. I've got objectives and value goals, outcome goals, process goals, and to do. Let's go through each of these. You can see I have the icon as well. So when I click into Okay, so when you look over here, you'll see I have a list. I've got make our company go viral, thought leadership, get organized, etc. These are like the big objectives in your life. These are your values. These are the things you want to do. Over here, I have 
link to it, the outcome goals. So the outcome goals, like for example, I would like to hit 10,000 on Twitter. I'd like to get 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. Um, I don't know why Make More Friends is on there, that's wrong. <laughs> um, but then you'll see how you know each one goes with that. So for Get More Money, I'd like to sell $10,000 in Notion templates per month. I would like to make more money. I would like to get new clients. These are like the outcome goals, right? These are the goals. Um, find a life partner, travel to Scotland, write, you know, write a book. There is a lot of specific goals that you want to accomplish in order to get these things, right? These objectives. So if I wanted to become healthier, I want to lose 20 pounds, get better posture. Those are like two of the outcome goals that I have. Now, if you go into outcome goals, you'll see that those are listed here. They also have the status. So is it in progress? Has it not been started yet? Where are you at? And then also, because these are measurable goals, you can actually choose it. So for example, it's hitting 10,000 on Twitter. If I'm at 500 right now, I'm only 5% done. It actually shows you that. So that's another thing that's really helpful about outcome goals is you can measure them. So that's the second one. The third one is process goals. So these are goals that you want to do. For example, if I want to get better posture, I have to stretch daily, right? That is something that I have to do and I have to look that up. So the goal is to stretch daily. That's not my to do. That's my goal. And my goal is to stretch every day. So that it shows over here, my objective goals, and then you can add a to do, right? So I could be like, um, stretch today, right? That's your actual action item. Go and stretch. So having something where you have your to-do list of every day, it's like today I'm going to stretch. That is your to-do list. And then finally you'll see on the to-do, I have all of these different things. These are just the little things that you're doing priority level. Um, it, it shows the process, the outcome, and, um, I've hidden the, uh, the objective. Cause I'm like, when you're looking at your to-do list, you don't really need to think about the objective. You're just thinking about, okay, how does this move forward to my process goal? So if I have a process goal of posting daily on Twitter, right? That's let, let's just use this example. That is a process goal. It's a goal of mine is to post daily on Twitter. My outcome goal is to hit 10,000 on Twitter and that will happen by me posting daily. But the one thing that I can do today, my to-do list is to schedule tweets or to write tweets or uh, post tweets today. Though that is your action item inbox. That's like the things that you have to do every day. I hope that this makes sense. So this is all included in the template and this is all on there. So I just wanted to share with you that you can set this up. This is all here. So if I were to select, let me just give an example, submit book proposal. So the proposal or so the, the process goal would be to write 10 pages every day of the book. Let's just say, let's just say that that is the goal. So the, the book proposal um, is something that you're eventually going to do, but you have to write the book as well. So, and the outcome goal, which if we go here, we can add that outcome goal. So what the outcome goal would be to write a book, right? That's the outcome goal is to finish a book, all that. So you could also put for your to do, um, write 10 pages, right? Cause that is the thing that you have to do every day with the goal being to write 10 pages a day. So the goal that you're achieving, this is your process goal, right? That is something that you could do. These can now be changed, which is so cool. So this is the step. So these are the steps that you have to get there to be able to do that thing. I hope that this makes sense. So there's kind of four different levels. There's, there's the daily, there's the like, I guess, weekly or, or quarterly goals. There's the outcome goals, which you should probably achieve within the quarter or the year. And then finally the main objective, which is like be more healthy, make more money, that sort of thing. So that is how I set that up. You can see it's also on the homepage on Notion. Um, if you scroll down here, you'll see the to-do is on here. It's just another view of it. So I hope that that was helpful. This is part of the, the system. They're all interlinked, so you can link them to each other. So anyways, I hope that this is helpful. Um, I definitely want to do more content on this because I feel like I have read a lot of books and things um, about this topic. So anyways, I hope that this was helpful and hope you guys have a great day.